you got there, mate? I am going to be an invisible man. Invisible man. Got the ghillie suit on. Got the ghillie suit, got the pants, you got the top two. Wait one. Wait one. What's the theory, mate? Brown tree trunk. Yep, yep, yep. Green foliage. Yeah. Sound like a plan? Yep. How's that? Yep. Manuka man. Yep. You got a heat, you got a heat thing, you know, too, haven't you? Yep. Yep. I watched it yesterday, man, had a good stalk and a good shot on a fellow, and uh, I was on his shoulder the whole time. I went to replay it and I realised I hadn't pushed the play button, so. <laughs> so hopefully I'll do better this time. It's cold. Shake it like a leaf. Close. Just over the top. Over the top. Yeah. Missed. How far was he? Oh. To 18. 18, 20. It's a bit shoot. Oh, yeah. So it's just there. He was slow. Better down the basic way. Yeah. It was close. <laughs> just over the top. Yo, yo. What have you been doing, mate? Oh, having a bit of a minor epic. You want to tell we'll us give, about it? Yeah, we'll give you a wee update. Um, we had yesterday what was probably our best day's um, hunt in the raw ever. Oh, I'll try and cut a long story short, but we walked up the spur early in the morning. and Got we, three stalks. Yeah, we got three stalks on three different stags. Um, first one, we got busted by a couple of hinds. Second one was a stag on the ridge, 80 metres, 
roaring his head off. And he eventually came towards us, come to about 40, eh? 50 maybe. Are you talking about the one that put his horns to bed? No. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was that stag. There's too many to remember. Yeah, but he just didn't come within range and we couldn't get closer and he, um, he bolted in the end. But yeah, the one Aaron's talking about did actually happen before that and that was um, a stag that we heard roaring on a far ridge. We could tell by the sound and location of his roars that he was pushing his hinds into the scrub gully. He was putting them to bed in that gully. Um, so I made a stalk once we realised they'd um, become stationary. I went into the scrub to try and get in on them. Um, but at the same time, he decided to come out for a bit of a wander. Mm. And he passed under me at about 10 metres, but no chance for a shot. And I think he ran into you mm. out in the open. Yep, I was sitting back with the camera trying yep. to film it. So that was three stag. Fast forward to mid-afternoon into a back gully we call Stag Gully because it's always got three or four or five stags in it. Mm. And, man, no, there was about five, I think, in there. In the end, yeah, they were coming from everywhere. It was great. Yep. It was, yeah, like you say, it was probably one of the best, most exciting. Yeah. Just for sheer numbers and we saw stags fighting and uh, having actually, actually scrapping, which you don't see too often. Yeah, it was full contact, wasn't it? Mm. Yep. Um, there was a lot of parallel walking and just chasing each other around, trying to peel off hinds. And There's one stag in particular we were chasing, though, wasn't he? He's a yep. big, big nine. He's got three on one top. No bay tines, unfortunately, but um, he's really, really long. long. Yeah, he's long, so we sort of... He was busy gathering up hinds from all over the place, wasn't he? And we yep. ended up sort of chasing him backwards and forwards, and we didn't get busted. We actually, we, surprisingly, we did quite well, but um, yeah. that got quite exciting in the end, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I'll try and... Trying to, we're trying to keep this short. Late in the day, the the big long nine, which we nicknamed David Longy, <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to manage his hinds on the space down the bottom, and uh, a very good ten came in. I think they parallel walked, and then they yep. they come to blows. Yep. yep. And the David Longy ousted the ten, mm. and he came round underneath me. He was too, it was about 40 metres downhill from me, just a bit too low. And when I got the chance, I raced forward up to a manuka, and he was still at about 35 downhill. And I thought, right, as soon as you turn away and walk around the gully, I'll race ahead to the next bush and try and gain some ground. But he actually saw my movement. And instead of bolting, he, he just caught a glimpse of, of me. He turned around. And then started walking straight up towards me, rolling mm. his flipping head off. So I ducked him behind this manuka, and he came up to about 12 metres, kind of peering around the side of this bush. And anyway, I got one into him, a frontal shot, right in the centre, and looked like good penetration. And we found the arrow later on, and it, it, half the arrow was covered mm. in blood. Yeah, so um, nice and deep. Mm. anyway, we blood trailed him for about an hour before dark. We went 350 metres. Back in here this morning, and we've been blood training all morning, and it's one o'clock now, mm. and just going on specs. But what I think has happened is the arrow's gone in maybe just left of centre, and instead of penetrating through the brisket and into the rib cage, into the chest cavity, I think it may have hit the ribs and slid down between the shoulder blade and the ribs because. Although it's dark red blood, there's not a lot of it. Mm, no. It's far between, isn't it? Yeah, he Big dropped the, dropped the arrow, so it's got an exit hole for the blood to escape, but um, just the lack of blood. And he's gone, as the crow flies, about 650 metres so far. And if you include the gullies and ridges, it's probably more like a 1,000 metres. Mm. We're still on the trail, but I'm, I have an idea it's slipped down between in that nothing area, mm. hit a vein or something. Mm. But anyway, we'll keep looking yep. as long as we can. <clears throat> I had a weird adventure too. Yesterday, Matt, the nine, um, before he had an encounter with his ten, he was over with some hinds, and we were reasonably close. We were about 80, 100 away. So Matt started a stalk, and I stayed back with the camera. And uh, Matt got a new in about 20 on, didn't you? Mm. In the end, but you couldn't get a shot. Yep. And just as you were getting ready to take a shot, he took off, and he came back towards me. Yeah. Here I am sitting with a camera. I didn't have my bow, and uh, I could hear footsteps coming. And it's the first time I've ever thought, shit, I hope it doesn't come my way. We're too close. Long story short, he passed me about three metres, um, but on the other side of a bush. And I've got a wee bit of footage. 
But it was pretty exciting, good times. Excellent, fun, all right. Right, we'll find the stag of mats and uh, hopefully get some glory, uh, some uh, hero shots. Hero shots, it's in here. It's Talk about emotional roller coaster. It's late in the day now. We tracked that stag for another couple of hundred meters until we just lost the trail. He was the last blood we had was on an open ridge, and he um, obviously went into the scrub somewhere, but we just couldn't find where. And on top of that, it started raining too. Man, she's hard on hard on the old emotions. Bow hunting. You hit a, you put in a good stalk. You put in what you think's a good shot, and you're just riding us massive high and then the epic blood trail ensues and no result at the end of it just a great big emotional dump but anyway that's life I guess so I had a nice split up up the top gully and I came down uh, the gully we had all the action in yesterday and David Longy was in there again with seven hinds he had them all parked up in one little gully there, one part of it, and then went for a bit of a walkabout. So I seized that opportunity to try and cut him off. But um, he was just a bit quick for me and he ended up winding me. He actually took off out of the gully without his hinds, which was a hard case. So the hinds were still there, snuck down on them and got in really close. Got some uh, really good photos of some snoozing deer. So just heading back to camp now, trundling along, there's about an hour of light left, I might catch something out between here and there, but catch you later. <coughs> Yo, how's it going everyone? Uh, I told you last night, uh, Aaron and I split up. I came down that gully I talked about and Aaron went down the main spur. Uh, you had a bit of action, didn't you? Yes, good, yep. yep. Managed to get lucky, just on dark actually. Came onto a bit of a, a uh, flat on the spur. There was a stag roaring on it. On it. He was reasonable nine. Uh, sort of had a go at him and then on the route, he went over the knob and I glanced over to my left and uh, there was about four or five fallow feeding, so I uh, snuck up on one of them, got into 30 metres, steep downhill shot, and managed to nail it, so it was good. Nailed it, it was yeah. a perfect shot. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, 30 metres. It's, it's like bow hunting, oh, you seem to have a run of good luck and then you have a run of bad luck, so. Tell me about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe my good luck's over, but yeah, it's been good, real good. So I was wrapped, so I managed to find them. It was a nice wee yearling, so it was beautiful. Yeah. Good condition. Good finish to the trip, eh? Mm. This is our last day, we're just heading out now, so. Just 
been a good week. Got mm. um, lots of stalks and lots of close encounters. And Roaring was going, it got better as the week went on, didn't it? Mm. We sort of found that um, sort of about nine o'clock the stags seemed to start up in the morning, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and, then, and then later on in the evening again, uh, with that bit of a lull during the day. But no, that in all was yeah. pretty good. That mid morning period, um, it seems to be that the stags, after the hinds have had their morning feed, they they bed up and the stags literally push them into a sheltered hideaway gully and bed them up for the day. And then the, once the stags have put them to bed, you know, they know where they are and then they go for a walkabout, mm, don't they, mid morning for a couple of hours. Witnessed it a couple of times here, yeah. we actually saw stags do it. It was really good to see, actually. Yeah. One stag in particular. He literally put him to bed in some tall kanuka, and then when he's happy, he came for a walk about, and we actually got quite close to him, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he, was, he was a nice tag, so it was good to see. Yeah. It's interesting, real interesting, when you can, you um, you have the, or the opportunity to just watch animals doing their stuff. You learn a lot. Mm. So that's our 2018 raw trip. It's all over. Back to work. Back to back bloody to, work. Back to reality. Yep. And we'll catch you probably in about a month's time, well, hopefully with a good um, tar trip video. Mm. We're heading out down to South Western again early May, so for another week. Should be good. Catch you later. See ya.